Hi, my name is Kristen Curtis, and I'm a registered dietitian with the Villages Health, also a member of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is the world's largest organization of nutrition professionals. Every year in March, we celebrate National Nutrition Month, and this year the theme is Eat Right, Bite by Bite, which supports the philosophy that every bite of nutrition can be a step in the right direction toward better health. Today's presentation is going to focus on how small changes can add up and help us get started on improving our health. Good nutrition doesn't have to be overly restrictive or overwhelming, and we know that small goals and changes can have a cumulative health effect, and every little bit or bite of nutrition is a step in the right direction. At the end of today's presentation, you'll be able to identify a minimum of three steps you can take towards a healthy lifestyle, name two resources that can help you improve your eating style, and explain how to use the new nutrition facts label to make healthful food and beverage choices. Since March is National Nutrition Month and this theme is, the, the year's theme is Eat Right Bite by Bite, we want to make sure that you understand that we know small, making changes isn't always easy, which is why it's helpful to keep things simple. Don't try to change everything at once. Throughout today's presentation, we'll be talking about some of the small steps that you can take to create a more healthful eating style. First of all, it's important to eat a variety of nutritious foods every day. By eating a variety of foods, it helps us make sure that we're getting the nutrition that we need, as well as preventing that boredom factor. So many times when we eat the same things over and over, we get bored and then we fall off the bandwagon and tend to choose less nutritious foods. We also want to make sure we're staying hydrated in a healthy way. So we shouldn't be consuming calories or sugar from our beverages, rather drinking mostly water and calorie-free, sugar-free beverages. We also want to make sure that we're understanding the Nutrition Facts panel, which we're going to talk about more in depth in a minute practicing good use of portion control, and making sure that you're taking the time to truly enjoy your food. One of the most helpful ways to be successful is to plan your meals each week. So using a grocery list to shop for those healthy foods, taking inventory of what you have on hand in your refrigerator, freezer, and pantry, and then making your list from there. We understand that dining out is something that many of us do, but when we plan the meals and events, it helps us to make more menu savvy choices when we do eat out. We also want to be choosing healthy recipes to make during the week and trying things that are new and different. Utilizing those leftovers can make great options for packing school and work lunches. And when we plan our weeks and plan in our travel, we can make sure we have healthy things on hand during those times as well. We also want to learn to create healthy meals in the kitchen at home. So by having healthy ingredients on hand and sometimes even pre-chopped and stored helps us to utilize those without creating so much food waste. There's nothing more frustrating than buying a bunch of fresh produce only to throw it out on garbage day. Of course, you want to make sure you're practicing proper home food safety, sharing meals together with your family and friends when you can, and trying those new flavors and foods. We also have the option of consulting with a registered dietitian nutritionist. So there's a very big difference between somebody who is a registered dietitian nutritionist or RDN and somebody that is a nutritionist. So the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is the foundation and supports the evidence-based knowledge and requires extensive training of the registered dietitian nutritionist. Here at the Villages Health, we have three RDNs that are available to help you receive personalized nutrition advice to meet your needs. So we can sit down with you, help you to create those meal plans, understand what your food preferences are, understand any conditions or medical background that you have, and develop an appropriate plan from there. On eatright.org, that is the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website. It is a very, very good web website to reference for healthful recipes, tips for smart food choices, different videos, infographics, and even activities. So there are things on there for everyone, all the way from kids to adults, games and ideas, articles, and all of it is evidence-based. 
So when we're thinking about making healthful food choices, we want to be starting simple. The MyPlate is also a great reference guide. So MyPlate.gov has wonderful, or I'm sorry, ChooseMyPlate.gov has wonderful resources that are available to you and helps you to understand the components of the MyPlate. So the MyPlate focuses on whole fruits, varying your vegetables, having half of your grains be of whole grain variety, a variation in your protein routine, selecting fat-free or low-fat dairy, and aiming to eat and drink less sodium, saturated fat, and added sugar. So this is the My Plate image here. If you recall the food guide pyramid from years ago, this image is what's replaced that in order to help us better understand how we should be laying out our meals day by day. The My Plate divides meals into the five food groups and help us, helps us to build those better balanced meals. The groups include fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. So research has shown that healthy eating patterns, which include the recommended amounts from each food group, can have a positive effect on our health. Specifically, eating healthy has been associated with reduced risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, some types of cancer, and can help to create a healthy weight. Sadly, most Americans don't get enough of the servings of produce, which is something that, of course, provides our nutrients, thus the increased risk of those diseases. When we're looking at the My Plate, a simple way is to make half of your plate fruits and vegetables. On average, for most people, this amounts to about one to two cups of fruit per day and between one and a half to three cups of vegetables each day. Because everyone's nutrition needs are a little bit different, that ChooseMyPlate.gov is a great resource and can help you figure out what your calorie level is and what your fruit, your fruit, vegetable, and different servings should be throughout the day. We also want to be including low-fat or fat-free dairy products. So these provide us with protein, calcium, and a variety of other nutrients. Um, calcium fortified soy milk is also part of the dairy group for people that can't tolerate milk or choose not to, with the general recommendation being between two and a half to three cup equivalents per day of dairy products. Simple ways to include other than drinking a glass of milk are making something like a low fat yogurt parfait, making your milk or your oatmeal with milk. Um, using that milk in your coffee beverages, having low-fat cheese on your sandwich, using cottage cheese with fruit as a snack. Plenty of ways to incorporate dairy if drinking a glass of milk is something that you enjoy to do. We also want to try to be eating more whole grains. So the recommendation is to make half of our grains every day be in whole grain form. So we get our fiber as well as antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals from whole grains. Simple ways to include more are things like using brown rice instead of white, whole grain noodles instead of enriched pasta, selecting whole grain breads when you're making a sandwich or having toast, using whole grain flours when you're baking or making pancakes and waffles, and also experiencing with some whole grains that you might not be as familiar with, some things like quinoa or millet. A variation in the protein foods is also something that we should consider. So trying to include mostly lean meats is what we recommend. Anything that you can trim the fat off of before cooking it, we suggest you do that. But also thinking about different forms of protein, including plant-based forms. So beans and peas are great options as well as soy. We should also be including seafood at least twice a week. Um, eggs are a great source of complete protein that we can include not only for breakfast, but as a snack. So now I want to take some time to focus on the nutrition label. So the My Plate, along with the Nutrition Facts label, is what helps us to make those better food and beverage choices. We might already be somewhat familiar with the Nutrition Facts panel, but it has changed a bit. So you can see the original label is over there on the right. And the newer, I'm sorry, the, on the left, and the newer labor, label is on the right. So these have been updated. The servings per container now is the total number of servings in the entire package of, or container, the serving size, 
which is a guide rather than a recommendation of how much to eat or drink and the calories per serving. So you notice that those look quite different. When you take a moment here to look at the nutrition facts panel in a little bit closer detail, the first thing I want you to look at is the updated serving sizes. So these were updated to reflect what people actually consume more versus what was recommended before. So you might notice that the serving size and some of the products that you were used to have changed a little bit. Also the calories in bolder and larger font. There's a new line for added sugars, which is now required on the label. And the list of vitamins and minerals that have to be included has, have also been updated. So vitamin D and potassium are now required on the label, whereas vitamins A and C are no longer required. If we look at the next slide here, nutrients to get more of. So dietary fiber, as well as vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. So many Americans don't get enough of the recommended foods that have those items, which we're gonna look at here next on how you can increase your intake of some of those if you need to. So recommendations for dietary fiber include between 30 and 38 grams per day for men and between 21 and 25 grams per day for women. Plants have the levels of insoluble and soluble fibers, so it's important, again, to eat a variety of different types of those so that you're getting both types of fiber as well as getting different nutrients there. So when we look next at vitamin D, how much of that? So women and men under the age of 50 need about 600 IUs or international units per day. Between the age of 51 and 70, 600 IUs per day. And above 70, 800 IUs per day. At-risk individuals need upwards of 1,000 to 2,000 IUs per day, but the safe upper limit is no more than 4,000 for most adults. Sources of vitamin D, of course, include sunlight. Our skin makes vitamin D from the UVB rays in the sunlight and can store it for use. But because of concerns for skin cancer and the use of sunblock, most people don't get the amount of vitamin D that they need. It is available naturally only in a few foods, like your fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, and tuna, and your egg yolks but it's added or fortified to things like milk and some other things like dairy products, orange juice, soy milk, and cereal. Calcium, how much do we need there? You can see the recommendations of women over the age of 50 need about 1,200 milligrams per day. Men over the age of 71 also need about 1,200 milligrams a day. And men and women, men younger than 70 and women younger than 50 need only about 1,000 milligrams per day. This includes the amount of calcium that you get both from your food and your supplements. When many people think of calcium, of course, their minds go right to dairy products, which are great sources of calcium. However, you can see here in the different categories that there are many other dietary sources of calcium, including things like collard greens and salmon, um, evaporated milk. As we go towards the lesser servings, things like your almonds, your beans, and a lot of your greens like broccoli and kale, mustard greens, even an orange has calcium. So it's very possible even for those people that don't consume dairy, cannot tolerate it or choose not to, to achieve adequate levels of calcium. Iron, how much iron do we need? On average, we need about eight milligrams per day for adults over 50. There are plenty of food sources of iron, which of course include your meat and seafood, poultry, but iron is also fortified in many of our breakfast cereals and our breads. Beans are a good source of iron, also things like spinach and peas. Nuts, dried fruits, and raisins have great sources of iron as well. We also have the iron, though, that comes in different forms. So you want to think about the heme versus non-heme iron. So our, our non-heme iron is found in our plant foods and our iron-fortified products. Uh, meat, seafood, and poultry have both heme and non-heme iron. 
and our bodies absorb the iron from the plant sources better when we eat them with meat, poultry, seafood, and foods that contain vitamin C, like our citrus fruit. How much potassium do we need? So men about 3,400 milligrams per day, and women about 2,600 milligrams per day. Our fresh produce, our fruits, our vegetables are great sources. Frozen is just fine. Um, trying to choose our fresh or frozen produce over the can is recommended. But we also get potassium in our nuts, beans, and dairy products as well. So which are the nutrients that we want to get less of? So you can see here that our saturated trans fats, as well as sodium and added sugars are the things that we want to be limiting. The good news is with these labels now, we're able to see how much of that sugar is in the added form, which is very helpful. So we're going to take a minute now to look at the different categories here of some of the items that um, we should be limiting. So the saturated fat and the trans fat, um, we need fat. However, the body consumes some of it, or I'm sorry, the body makes some of the fat and then we consume fat. So the saturated fats are going to come from our animal foods. So things like your meat, of course, and your fish, but also dairy foods, things that come from animals as well. Trans fats, on the other hand, are found particularly in our processed foods that contain hydrogenated oils, such as our baked goods, fried foods, and snack foods. So our aim here should be to replace the solid fats with the unsaturated fats, like mono and poly unsaturated fats. So an example here would be using an olive oil or a vegetable oil instead of butter. Now we're taking a saturated fat and replacing it with an unsaturated form. Sodium and added sugars are something that we also want to limit. Um, so the healthy eating pattern recommends less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day for adults. Um, however, amongst those that have hypertension or high blood pressure or pre-hypertension, it's recommended that we reduce that intake even further to 1,500 milligrams per day, which is not very much. Added sugars are listed now on the Nutrition Facts panel under the total sugars. Um, fruit and dairy products such as milk and yogurt contain their own natural sugars, so these don't need to be avoided. Rather, it's helpful when you're looking at a yogurt, for example, if it's a flavored yogurt, to see how much of that sugar has been in the added form. It's recommended to limit calories from added sugars to less than 10% of your total daily calories. So why do many people not eat right? So when we looked at some of the research, here were some of the most common reasons. I thought I was. I don't know how. It's too much work, it's too expensive, I'm too busy, I don't like vegetables, I may have to cut back on the things that I like. So if you can think of yourself in any of these examples and what a reason might be that you tend to not eat right. Once you figure that reason out, it's helpful to set those small goals and figure out where you can change. This image here is something I think is helpful when you're planning your meals. So it uses the uh, My Plate Guide to help you create that balanced meal. So when you look at the breakfast, for example, recommending a serving of dairy, fruit, protein, and grains, and you can see as you go throughout the day, those little pie pieces help to kind of shape things together so that at the end of the day, you're getting a more balanced plan. So we're going to look at a few examples here of what are some better choices according to my plate. So over there on the left, we have a fruit flavored yogurt and a medium sized muffin. And on the right, we've got plain yogurt topped with berries, granola, and nuts. So you can see there's almost twice as many calories in the muffin and with the yogurt than there are with the yogurt and the berries. We have less saturated fat, we have less sodium, and look at the amount of added sugar, okay? So the little image on the bottom tells us that by choosing the plain yogurt topped with berries, granola, and nuts, we've now met a recommended fruit, grains, protein, and dairy serving, versus by selecting the option on the left, we only met two of those groups. Looking at another example for breakfast, having something like an egg, sausage, and cheese burrito, 
versus two taco tortillas um, using a corn tortilla instead of flour, which gives us a whole grain with black beans, cheese, and salsa. Again, we've got fewer calories on the one on the right, but look at how much less sodium we have. We don't have any added sugar, and we have way less saturated fat. So way more areas are lit up on the bottom of that my plate on the one on the, on the right versus the one on the left. So here are some other um, little breakfast ideas. Um, this is a piece of avocado toast. So what are the benefits here? So avocado toast, um, avocados contain potassium. In fact, they contain more potassium than a banana. They're a rich source of that monounsaturated fat. They're a great source of fiber, in addition to the whole grain bread that we put them on top of. And avocados have, don't have a whole lot of flavor, so we can really shape them to how we want them to taste. So this particular example, we used some fresh tomatoes and then we used some nice microgreens on the top to really create that pop of flavor. Another example here is to create um, overnight oats. So these are something that's really easy to make. We take oatmeal and you can soak it in whatever um, liquid you want overnight or even mix together some milk and some yogurt. Um, oatmeal is a great whole grain, it's rich in fiber. Um, you can put chia seeds in there with um, chia seeds are high in fiber as well, as well as antioxidants and a good source of plant-based protein. Then we top it with our berries and nuts, which provide us with even more antioxidants, phytonutrients, which means plant-based nutrients, and vitamin C. And this breakfast in particular prep provides us with a serving of whole grains as well as dairy and fruit. Another example here for breakfast is an egg white vegetable omelet. So egg whites are a good source of protein, low in saturated fat. Then we add colorful vegetables to give us fiber and, and phytonutrients. We can even add um, cheese, but if you use the sharp crumbly cheese, you can add a lot of flavor without adding too many calories because the taste is much more pungent. Then we can add a serving of whole grain toast on the side for extra fiber. Um, this is a chia seed pudding here. Again, we talked a little bit about chia seeds before and their fiber antioxidant properties. Um, this, this particular one was made with almond milk, which is lower in calories and carbohydrates than your cow's milk is. You can use local honey to help sweeten that up, which can also help with those seasonal allergies. Fresh or frozen fruit provides additional fiber and vitamin C as well as potassium. And we can have a lot of different flavor combinations here as well. So moving on to lunch, um, making something like a simple peanut butter and jelly sandwich on white bread with a bag of potato chips, or that peanut butter and banana sandwich with baby carrots on the side. So pretty obvious here which one is a better choice. Uh, we light up four of those recommended food groups on the one on the right. We're getting a nice whole grain and more fiber in the whole grain bread than we would in the white bread. We're getting less added sugars um, and, of course, less fat by skipping the potato chips. This option here is a chicken salad sandwich. Um, and the only thing here we switched was to eat half of that chicken salad sandwich and add a small side salad instead of eating the whole salad. So we're getting more of our vegetables in there. We're getting the same number of food groups provided, but we're getting less sodium, less fat, and fewer calories. Some more examples here for lunch that we could include. This first one is a Buddha bowl. So basically what that is is a grain bowl topped with some type of plant-based protein. This one in particular, we used garbanzo beans, which are chickpeas. So it's a fiber-rich plant-based protein. Then we used a color or variety of colorful vegetables, whatever you have extra on hand to add even more fiber and color. Um, there's a, a serving of grains in here by, by using quinoa, which adds even more of that plant-based protein. There's olives, which are a great unsaturated fat, and add a little bit of that salt so that you could use less dressing on something like this. And again, the flavor combinations are endless, so you really could use whatever extra vegetables you have on hand. Um, this one here we call the superfood salad, so it uses kale. Um, which is a great source of vitamin C and antioxidants. It's actually referred to as one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Um, those little purple spiralized things are beets, which are more antioxidants and have those anti-inflammatory properties as well as have been shown to reduce blood pressure. 
And then we've got blueberries and avocados in here, both of which can be protective against heart disease. This one here is a spicy tuna wrap. Um, tuna is one of those lean proteins, so it's a lower fat option and also a great source of omega-3s. We used uh, those matchstick carrots and celery inside to add a nice crunch, which give us vitamins A and C. And then we used avocado so that we can use less mayonnaise. So we're getting more of that unsaturated fat and fiber as well as potassium from the avocado versus the mayonnaise. Lastly, using that whole grain wrap instead of a flour tortilla to give us more fiber. This here is a quinoa salad. So quinoa is a higher fiber grain, also providing a source of plant-based protein. The dressing that we used was a simple blend of olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, and red wine vinegar. So we've got a lot of flavor, but we're not getting all of those additives or added sugars or saturated fats that you find in a lot of the commercially prepared salad dressings, especially the creamy ones. Olive oil is a great monounsaturated fat. Um, and garlic, there's a lot of different health benefits of garlic, as we know, um, specifically reducing the risk of heart disease. This one here is a lentil soup. So it's another plant-based meal. Lentils are rich in our B vitamins, iron, magnesium, and potassium. Um, cumin is in here, which can um, aid in digestion. Collard greens, which are a good source of vitamin K and iron. And then tomatoes, which are a good source of lycopene, which is a, a heart health thing. Um, also being rich in potassium, vitamin C, and fiber. I'm sorry, folate. For dinners, um, some of the My Plate meals here that we looked at were comparing two pasta dishes. So the one on the left was the fettuccine alfredo with Italian sausage versus the one on the right using whole wheat spaghetti noodles and meatballs with a garden salad. You can see how much less saturated fat we get, how much less sodium we get, um, which of course adds up to getting fewer calories, but we're also getting a serving, serving of vegetables in with our evening meal as we should by including that small salad. Um, this example here, we have chili. Um, one is inside a bread bowl and one includes a whole wheat roll on the side. So you know, we know that when we have soups in general, they are a higher sodium food choice. So you'll notice that the sodium content of both of these meals is quite high. Um, but as you look at the calories, the fat, and even the added sugars, by having that whole grain roll instead of the complete bread bowl, you're saving a lot there. Some of the other dinner meals that we looked at, this one is a salmon sheet pan meal. So one of my favorite things about the sheet pan meals is that there's only one pan to wash. Um, salmon is a great source of omega-3 fats, which is, can improve our cardiovascular health. We also roasted that rate right alongside sweet potatoes and broccoli. So the sweet potatoes are good fiber as well as B vitamins and beta carotene. And then the broccoli is a good source of calcium, vitamin K, and vitamin C. This example here was turkey tacos. So turkey is going to be a leaner choice than your beef is, so less saturated fat. Um, you can make your own seasoning blend using your dried herbs and spices instead of those taco packets, which tend to be very high in sodium. And then we can customize this by adding extra beans or additional vegetables for more fiber and cutting back on the amount of meat that we use. These are chicken kebabs, so using chicken, which is, again, a lower fat or a leaner protein source. Um, chicken's also a good source of selenium, phosphorus, and B vitamins. You could really put any vegetables that you want on here, but zucchini and yellow squash tend to hold up really nicely on the grill and are a great source of potassium, antioxidants, and vitamin C. And then you serve this along something, alongside something like brown rice or quinoa for that whole grain serving, providing additional fiber. You could even add some fruit onto these skewers, um, you know, adding pineapple, comes out great on the grill, really whatever you want to add to add that extra flavor without needing to add, um, you know, marinades or things that are going to add extra salt. This example here is a shrimp stir fry. So shrimp is considered to be a low calorie protein, rich again in selenium and vitamin B12, and this would satisfy um, the recommendations for at least one of those seafood meals a week. 
This one uses ginger, which has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, we mixed along with um, asparagus and peppers. So the asparagus provides vitamins A, C, and K, fiber and folate. But again, you could use any combination of vegetables here, even a bag of those frozen steamable vegetables makes for a quick, easy meal. And then trying to serve this alongside of the whole grain or brown rice instead of the uh, white rice. This is a zucchini pasta, so instead of using noodles, which are a higher calorie, higher carbohydrate food, zucchini can provide us with more fiber and you can actually have a lot bigger serving of this. So they make these now that are pre-spiralized or it's very easy to spiralize zucchini or yellow squash yourself. But zucchini is a good source of that potassium, antioxidants, and vitamin C. Um, even if you wanted to still have some of the pasta, you could throw zucchini as half and your regular pasta or whole grain pasta as half. And then adding a source of protein. So you could add a, a vegetable or a plant-based source of protein like garbanzo beans or chickpeas in here. Or you could mix this up with your traditional spaghetti sauce if you'd like to. So in conclusion, as we think about some of the meal ideas and looking at the labels, identifying foods that have those added sources of saturated fats and sugars and sodium, trying to keep those low, we want to think about how every little bit or bite of nutrition is a step in the right direction. So hopefully by attending today, you learned a little bit more about those food labels, really looking at the key components of what to get more of and what to limit. You learn where to find those credible sources of information and understand that there is a registered dietitian available to you if you need that extra help. And that you maybe come up with a few different meal or snack ideas and understand the importance of planning your meals and snacks ahead of time. By doing that, we're able to enjoy our food and make sure that we're getting that variety. So I hope you all have a happy National Nutrition Month, which occurs every year in March. If there's any questions or concerns that you have, please direct them my way. You can reach me via email, kristin.curtis at thevillageshealth.com, or the phone number is also listed here on the screen. Thank you all for attending, and I hope to see you soon.